Hi guys, Freaky Frisco here, back from YCS London. Uh, excuse the voice and the floor. Uh, my room's got to be refurbished, so I have to film down here like a like a peasant. Uh, so I placed 133rd with Grim Maju, missing out on top cut by three points plus tiebreakers. So I went X3 in the bubble through all 11 rounds. Uh, amazing event. Uh, third time I was there, uh, truly amazing, best one yet. Uh, unfortunately, people got turned away, but they managed to come back for side events. Some of them, uh, we've got some videos coming up, especially like Ryan, uh, who who did some funny things on the day. So onto the deck, pretty simple. Triple Grim Maju. Uh, the amount of times I dropped this on someone and they just instantly scooped because it's like a 10k beat stick is amazing. Um, in perm, this and bat in damage step though, and I do cry. Uh, then, obviously, the next best card is Gizmek. Uh, drop this in their opponent's end phase, so you can still use its pop effect in your turn. Uh, also, rank, uh, rank 8 fodder, which is amazing, so really good for that. Um, free Eats and Millions. Pretty much a standard Grimaju has to be in this, basically. Uh, drop 15 cards, activate Gizmek, activate Pot of Desires, and then that's game of Grimaju right there already. Uh, then we've got the Danger lineup, as always. Free Bigfoot. Uh, the fun thing that you can do this, I didn't get to explain this in my other videos. Obviously, when you discard them for things like Super Poly, for Dynamiscus, for trading, you get to pop cards. Um, and that came up quite a lot. Uh, same, obviously, with the Thunderbird. So you drop this off Twin Twisters and you're now popping three set cards, which is quite a big blur, especially things like Paleo. I didn't play any Paleo, but uh, oh, um, uh, Salad mainly as well, and Subterra did that a few times. Two Hextrude. To Glyph. Uh, I actually summon this quite a lot as you saw a one card MST out of there can only be won a few times because you're not running any other winged beasts. Hextrude is amazing to summon turn one because you can make rank ink fodder out of her already. Her plus Gizmek is like a Sanafond or Hope Harbinger which did come up. Uh, if you make a Sanafond against Loonlight Orcus it turns out they can't play the game until Sanafond disappears. So I'd quite a grindy game against a, a Loonlight player. Uh, hand Traps, 3 Ash, Three shifter. Shifter is still, in my opinion, the best hand trap ever created. Uh, I drop this again against an Orcus player, and you just win. Um, they cannot play around this. You make this or Sanafond, and you win the Orcus matchup very easily, which is why this deck performed quite well. Uh, against Thunder as well, it gets rid of their protection. So, yes, Shifter is by far the best hand trap. Um, Ash came up clutch actually against things like Mystic Mine. I played a, a guy who played Mystic Mine, Burn round 11 so final round of day two uh we were both x3 at that point so we couldn't top but it was just a fun friendly game amazing guy if you're watching this uh shout out to you because you were really really fun to round out my day but yeah free ash just generic staple hand, tra hand traps good spells free stormbug uh six players didn't read this card and one of them got annoyed at me for not telling them what it does when it was there for them to read it. Guys, if you're playing a game, there's a big wall of text on board, read it. Um, yeah, so it's Sakuretsu Armor plus Magic Cylinder on legs. Uh, very, very good field spell. Won me loads of games just because people didn't bother to read it. Um, I say, when I say activate effect, that means the one to summon from deck. Um, there's got three effects in that card, guys. Some of you know what it does by now. Free Super Poly. Very, very good card, blowout card. Um... Again, if I do this, some some people just immediately scoop because it is that good of a card. Uh, changed my targets for this. Didn't actually play any Marine Cess, so the um, Diplexa Chimera didn't come up. But I did summon it against Salamran Great, which was nice. Again, you can discard your dangers off this, get extra effects, things like that. Uh, I did get Super Polyed once, though, which did hurt. Uh, interesting enough, though, with this, Eater Millions cannot be Super Polyed. So if you've got two Eater Millions, they cannot Super Poly you. So if you're scared of a Super Poly, try not to summon anything else or just summon one more thing. Uh, we've got two Eater Millions on board. Two Cyclone, came in clutch. I actually drew this in my final game against um, Mystic Mine after banishing about 30 cards from my deck. So uh, thank you, the almighty banished gods, for not getting rid of my back row or my uh, my Mystic Mine removal. Three Allure of Darkness. I ended up siding this out most games over things like Hickstreet because I realised that... Um, uh, it's not the best card because you kind of want your dangers and your your Gizmex. The only thing you really want to banish off this is the Hextrude, maybe in a clutch. But yeah, it's, it's still really good draw power and amazing. Uh, two Pot Desires because I'm a firm believer in not playing three. Me, me, or you like. Um, 
because this deck did deck out a few times in the event, and we don't want to do that. Two trading, pretty standard. Discard a, a danger or a hex tree or your gizmo. Gizmo is the best target or a danger. Um, and draw two. And then finally, free imperm. Still best hand trap uh, that isn't a hand trap. Or is a hand trap, depending on your point of view. But yeah, that was the main deck. Uh, moving on to the extra deck. Always put your Dinkus on top, so if this hit, you're thinking Orcust. So one Ding, made this once against Salad. Did alright. Um, it's not the best level 8 target you can make, but it's okay. One Sanofond, best best rank 8. Uh, shuts down Orcus like a, like a, well, like an Abyss Dweller. Uh, Hope Harbinger. Uh, it's made it once against, um, I think it was Pendulum. Didn't do a lot, really. Galaxy Package. This actually went quite well, although the Guru player was smart and Booker Moon this, so watch out if you're playing Guru. Uh, one Underclock Taker. Did this for game at one point. Made something small, swung a 10k Grimage into it, so that's always a fun thing. Burke Blocker. Didn't make it. Nightmare Cerberus. Didn't make it. Phoenix. Made it a few times. Actually, a very good card. Borosword. Didn't make it once this entire event. Made it at the regionals. Didn't make it here. Because um, I was just scared of things like Super Poly, so I didn't want to commit too much to the board. Uh, Super Poly targets still kept the Mug Dragon. I said I was going to take it out. Didn't didn't use it. Didn't use it once. Still so meh. One Duplexa Chimera. Uh, this came in for the Mermaid. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure everything else is the same. Very good. Very good target. Uh, something against Salaman. Great use. This effect turn off their spells and traps in the battle phase. So they couldn't rage me once I'd enter battle phase, um, and he can quick effect his mech in battle phase, and they can't pop it now, so that's also amazing. Uh, one, Dragus Prelia, made this after someone eradicated Epidemic Virus me, chaining my Super Poly to it. Thankfully, there's still left targets on board, so that was nice. Um, one, Starving Venom, um, made this the most. Very, very good card. Unfortunately, people can learn to get rid of the uh, get rid of it without activating its destruction effect. But yeah, extra deck still works the same, pretty much exactly the same. Uh, side deck, free Dynamiscus, free Twin, more spell and trap removal slash uh, just back removal. This is an amazingly good side deck card because I side this when they I know they're going to make me go first, and I can get rid of um, I can get rid of their the Thunder Dragons before they can make the Colossus. I can get rid of the Mystic Mine when they do that to me. I can get rid of uh, the Guru, the Hidden City, anything. I can uh, use this to get rid of, and it doesn't just go for cost, still anyone who doesn't know that, so you still uh, retain hand advantage. Moving on then, free Nibiru. It's Nibiru, enough said, it's a very stupidly good card. Things that changed, free Radian. I'm uh, not sure I would keep this in going forward, my idea was I'd side in against Marine Cess to get rid of the towers, uh, along with Evenly Matched, which is the next card, just to disrupt them and you know punish them for making such a big board. Didn't play any Marine Cess, didn't play anything Towers-like, so I didn't actually side it in once the entire event. Uh, I don't know if I'd put back in the Ogres, because the Ogres don't really do a lot, in my opinion, anymore. I don't actually know what to side. Maybe DD Crow uh, might be a good idea. But yeah, so that was my that was my deck. Like I said, placed 133rd. Obviously, Grim Archie players did better. Um, I lost to one of them round 7 in a Grim Archie mirror match, which was hilariously entertaining. Um, shout outs to all the people I did play that way in my event. Amazing. So Ryan, the cosplay player, uh, Grace of Dice. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It was the best end or best end to my day one I could have expected because it was so chill and relaxed. Uh, the Mystic Mind player. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I enjoyed our game. Um, and then obviously shout out to Team Shy, uh, CGC Gaming, um, and Forbidden Planet as well. Good shops to go to as well as Nerd World in Southampton. Wayne giving you a shout out here. Uh, but yeah, amazingly really good event. Konami, even though you had to turn people away, very much enjoyed this event. That was my dip profile, guys. Thank you very much and goodbye.